A character artist can draw really cool characters, but a character designer will design a character that looks cool, makes sense, and is practical for the world, the story, game, everything, whatever it may be, that they're being placed into. Welcome to the Great Box. This is a completely remote art academy for free where every single week, you, me, and everyone else get together and learn together. Character design can be one of the most fun and sought after jobs in the art industry, regardless of which one you're going for. But the barrier of entry is a blurred line with very few explanations as an outsider looking in. So today, after many tragic mishaps and delays, electricity outages, we have the Character Design Masterclass. Thank you, thank you, I'll be here all week. Literally, I'm coming back Saturday. And this is a retake, hence the video got delayed by three days. <coughs> First, you gotta pay that class fee of one like, one sub, and one share. Just share the video anywhere. Also, um, the Discord server, it's ready. Right now, you can get early access to know what videos are coming up and what projects I have in store. Today is gonna be a bit of a different video. We're actually gonna do some very analytical process here. So I want you to bear with me and I want you to understand as we go along. Now, let's get into the video. Making a character is fun and there's a lot of versatility to this in terms of what results you can get just off of pure imagination and craft. It's an art of its own and it's the most popular of them all. Everyone wants to make a cool character. Making a character is mostly a culmination of story, environment, culture, and history that shapes them into who or what they are. You see, the truth is character design comes in on top of all of the aforementioned. It's the cherry that everyone kind of forgets about when they're not a professional artist. It's like making a character and then proceeding to attach 20 characters onto that character. You scared yet? Don't be. I'm right here, dude. Chill. Relax. But of course, you gotta pay the class fee of one like, one sub, and share the video on your favorite art discord or community, wherever you are, wherever you may be. Maybe you share it with your parents. I don't care. Share it. Anyway, so how do we go about this? How do you handle this, Bichon? Well, sit back, grab a snack, and you're gonna want to keep one hand free because you're gonna want to take notes this class. In my time, I've learned a lot of things that can and cannot work. Design is built around the primary subject, and it should all always fit like puzzle pieces. The set design, the camera angles, the story, they all center around building up to you being the best, most presentable version of you possible, or in this case, your best character possible. And don't just take this at surface level and walk away when you hear it. In fact, I have a study for you, right here, the bad guys. This is what happens when the character designs are so good, they don't make you question their existence in set. This movie released in 2022 and got way more flack than it should've, honestly. It was a production marvel, and while it's seen its fair share of production interviews, not many people talk about that. Everything, the scenes, the action, the motion, the dialogue, they all breathe life into these characters, and it's made beautiful. The main cast, the supporting characters, and the oddly attractive fox lady that everyone seems to, uh, really like. This car shot wouldn't have fit all of them in with as much breathing room for personality if they had all been human or too human. In most animated films, let's be honest, you have this many people of different sizes in this small of a car, they're crammed cheek to cheek, awkwardly smiling for the camera, trying to scream to the children in the theater, hey, this is funny and silly, laugh, now, but this scene feels more lived in. There's a spatial respect between these characters where Mr. Snake, for instance, has absolutely nobody attempting to touch him regardless of how goofy they may get. Character design really lends itself to this shot and many others in similar ways. But how do we get there? How do we actually get to a point where we can make characters that work together like Lego bricks? Well, that's the magic of it. You kind of don't or at least not by force. It takes practice and feedback over time. Character designs are supposed to make characters engaging and visually pleasing to look at, memorable. But there are a lot of technicalities that go into it, especially in the game industry. Creating a character at a fundamental level is character design. It always will be. It's the core of it all. But the point to be made is that character design never full stops after simply making a character. And with that in mind, I know you have your own OC, you filthy fiction lover, I say as I make indie games comics and uh, working on them regularly and make fiction my entire career path. <clears throat> I want you to revisit your previous designs and create tiny iterations of them. Remember, keep your sketches in a bounding box, something small. You don't want to miss Papa's 
cookies. The reason we're doing this is to enable your creativity on a subject that you have already drawn at least once before, something you're already familiar with. And as you do that, let's walk over some tips for getting into character design. Just like every art subject, shapes will carry your art quality quite a lot, specifically shape language. Most new artists will overlook this because they don't understand it, but don't worry. If you're in that sort of boat, your gray box ship captain has a slew of videos dropping soon to help you get learnt real good. For now, I hope you got some fight in you because uh, you're on your own until then. Unless of course you wanna pay me $10 a month. Shape language takes up a massive part of character and environment design. By looking at a character, you should be able to, within your mind, generate a clear idea of who or what they are and what they do. Here are three sort of rule of thumb thingy things for shape language, for anything really. Blocky shapes will signify a barrier, a guardian, someone who's rather strong or reinforced. Soft round shapes signify positivity, friendliness, and peace. Angular shapes, or sharp ones signify danger, a thorn bush personality or a sharp tongue. And while they're all separate, all of these things can be mixed and matched on a single character to tell a visual story through anatomy alone. Now, while you're working on your drawing, I hope you are, I'm gonna start my own. You've seen it in the thumbnail and teased in last week's video. I'm gonna name him Damien. Let's say he's a youthful sorcerer. Now, no older than 19, he's grown up hardworking with the support of his working class family and found success at Wizard's Rest Academy for budding magicians. He's just had his graduation less than a week ago, and he's being sent on his first tour of the outside world in over six years. He's now a bit socially awkward and timid, uncomfortable in the outdoors, but he wants to get involved and he's got to play it cool because people look up to him now. Now we have a narrative, let's design him. Ideally, he's not super flashy, he's self-conscious of what others might think if they saw him without the gear on, so he's fully geared up, he's got crossed arms, head down, minds his own business, and only speaks when spoken to. Already, the character feels lived in. He feels human, and that's just on an idea that I threw together while recording this. It doesn't stop there. Let's add a little twist to this. What if this character was intended for a video game? I know a lot of you want to get into the game industry. Some of you have dream jobs at Riot or Blizzard or maybe even Airship Syndicate, whatever company you want to work at. This is for you. Let's scratch that entire narrative we just threw together, and let's say now uh, his name is, I don't know, Luther. He's a 33-year-old trained sorcerer and instructor who just lost his wife less than two years ago and now his mother is on her deathbed and he doesn't like to interact with anyone anymore. That got really dark, but you can see how you can just kind of swap things out just a tiny bit and the design takes on an entirely new meaning, but still to the same effect, if not greater. His design is very rounded off, like he doesn't really want to hurt anyone, but he also just doesn't want to get close. It gives him this sort of solitary intimidation factor, where you know he just doesn't want to be bothered, so it's best not to. This is what he would wear as an instructor, maybe, but what would he wear to battle? Usually in video games, you have customizable parts, right? You can switch, I don't know, your weapon or your armor, whatever. So here's how we typically figure that out. For one, most games like this are going to have 3D characters that use 2D characters as concept art and a base for them to sculpt their models. A quick breakdown is just 2D iterations, 2D sketch, 2D color, ship it over to the 3D artist, who then needs to do reference observation of the 2D art they were just sent, they would do block outs, begin sculpting, piece everything together, apply materials, and then color, along with some tweaks, poly optimizations, and everything else. Then it goes to the rigging team. This team adds animation bones, spines, yada yada yada, and frequently they'll add these little openings for additional customizable bones to attach. With all of these things in mind, you at the front end as the concept artist in 2D, you have to keep these things in mind, but also be in constant communication with all of those teams to make sure that whatever you're generating as a concept works for them. This is what we typically call gray boxing. Is it starting to add up now? You understand why this series is called the gray box? In this process, the 3D artist will work with the riggers and just drop a few really, really, really basic shapes to add to the character model and see if they can animate that to a reasonable extent. Ideally, nothing is clipping through each other or making any weird fusions. And if everything passes, you got the green light. So when we're designing 2D characters, we need to make sure that it's going to work. And there are many ways that this is affected. This is why sometimes character skins aren't as cool as their concept art. A lot of 
things factor into it. Does this affect visual identity of the character? Are they still identifiable by silhouette alone? Can I tell that this is Damien or Luther if I was completely colorblind and only had monochromatic vision? These are things you absolutely have to take into consideration if you're going to be a video game artist in character design. Everything needs to work in tandem and make the flow as fluid as possible for all members of the working team. Got that? Okay. Good. Take a break, okay? Go grab another snack. You probably finished your bag of chips by now. I, I'm not judging. Just go get another one. But, I mean, what if we wanted to design instead a water witch or a witch of the sea? We could do a good witch or a bad witch. We could also think of a narrative, like maybe her mother used her for... Uh, her skills and then her dad used her for money like I don't know just something really sad but she's prospering and she's doing as well as she can on the other hand you have this sort of more evil looking one but what if I told you they were actually inverse the friendly looking witch was actually the evil one and the more distraught and tattered looking witch who looks far more dangerous is actually the one who's kind of hard this poses an interesting narrative question to whoever's looking at this and perceiving these characters the moment they find out the dynamic they're then questioning what led the good witch to look like that? This is another way that you can really, really, really kick up the gears on character design and take something that subverts expectation to create more mystery. Here's another study for you. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. The main villain is literally death incarnate, and he appears in the form of a wolf. However, throughout the opening act of the movie, Puss is sort of depicted as the antagonist to the village and everyone. He's this obnoxious, flashy, valiant hero who's also incredibly narcissistic and egotistic. In the scene where these two characters meet, it's just assumed that he's just met another bounty hunter, and it's gonna be yet another case where Puss comes out on top, only to find out he is majorly outclassed and winds up running for his life. This is a great way to subvert expectations and create a narrative question. In the moment that the viewers witness this scene in theaters, they're wondering what is going on with Puss? Why is he so scared? All this time he's been so fearless, but now he's on his last of his nine lives, and he's never been this scared of death, even though it's inevitable. Now, this doesn't mean that you should just go willy-nilly and go against whatever your art director is telling you to do. Likely, that'll just get you fired. But if you're given the creative freedom to, try to subvert some expectations, and you might get something that's really unique. Another tip I have for character design and game development is to never, ever, ever Ever send your art director a grand reveal. Always show your process. Every single bit of progress needs to be shown so they can critique it and you don't have to remake the entire thing should your initial concept turn out to be the exact opposite of what they wanted. Now, if you can do a pretty cool sketch in like 20 minutes and you show that, well, that's not a grand reveal, but it will look cool and they might think it's a grand reveal, but it's not. Just keep that in mind. A lot of these tips will apply to general animation as well. It's not just video games. Whether it's 3D or 2D animation, make sure that you're taking into consideration what the animators are having to draw if it's 2D and what the animators are having to move if it's 3D. Cool silhouettes are great, but for animation practicality, they need to be able to move their joints without pieces of their armor slapping them in the face or digging into their skin. Unless there's a character that gets stronger from physical pain, then maybe, you know, you could have their armor with a bunch of thorns facing inward so that way whenever they move they're experiencing pain and thus getting stronger. If you have enjoyed this far, don't forget to leave a like and also join the Discord and maybe, just maybe, hit up that subscription because uh, you'll get a lot more personal training at the same caliber that you're experiencing right now, if not much better, along with some group sessions as well. Now, if you're still sketching your character iterations or maybe you've paused on it, that's okay too, but I I want you to go to it again and try making iterations expressing alternate versions of what the character could have been. What if they were evil? What if they were old and decrepit and really sad and depressed? What if they just found out that there are other versions of them? Are they losing their mind? Are they happy about it? Who knows? Try these explorations and put them into your portfolio. It's so helpful. And make sure that you write notes into that portfolio. Too many times I see everyone just kind of showing their art and not really showing their notes, their references, or anything that has to do with the technicalities that went into making the piece. So when you're putting forward a resume or a portfolio to send to a game studio or an animation studio, make sure that you include your notes, your resources, your references, everything. I want to take this opportunity to actually talk about a potential job opening. For now it's unpaid, but around 20 
2025 to 2027, I'm hoping that around that time it'll be paying out enough to grant full-time or at least part-time pay rates. Meaning in the next two or three years, if you stick with the gray box and enroll in the university, passing all semesters upcoming, not only will you receive a certification of completion and a written employment recommendation, you will also have an opportunity at a startup game studio with me. If that sounds appealing to you, definitely, most definitely check out the Discord and try out that $10 subscription. If you regret it, tell me about it. And if it's out of my control, I will at least do my best to give you something that you can take away from it. Now, one of the most important things when it comes down to character design is what medium you're going for, what industry you're going into. For animation, you wanna make sure that the character is as simplified as possible, especially if it's 2D animation. If it's 3D, hey, you can kinda go all out. No one's having to draw these parts individually frame by frame in a 3D animation, unless you're working on Spider-Verse. But for majority, for vast majority of 3D animations, you can create some pretty complex complex designs and not have too much bite back for it. In 2D, however, it's quite dangerous to go a little too far. Adding ornaments and intricate trinkets and such can really bog down on the animation budget of a series or a film. The goal is to simplify as much as you can reasonably without losing the essence of what story you're trying to tell. And most importantly, without losing the quality of the piece itself. Not only for 2D animation, but this also applies to comics. I know some of you following me and subscribing to this channel really want to make your own comics and you might just be in luck soon enough because I do have a indie comic publisher, an entire website dedicated to it that will be available quite soon. I'm also working on my own game, the first project of Studio High Ground, my own studio, and the game is called Woven. The name might change in the future, but that's what it is right now and you can go follow it right now on Twitter at twitter.com slash Woven Game. This is going to be a Metroidvania adventure platformer, and I really hope that you look out for this. If you enjoyed the Ori series or Hollow Knight or anything like that, you might like this one. I can't promise that it'll be the exact same quality, but it's going to be great. You can also follow me for active dev updates on Twitter and Instagram at the Gray Box Guy. That is the Gray Box Guy on Twitter and Instagram. So if this applies to comics, for what reason? As I mentioned before, in 2D animation, you're constantly drawing these characters frame by frame by frame. And well, in comics, it's quite similar. You're going to be drawing these characters hundreds, if not thousands of times, panel by panel, cover art by cover art, and even in your silly sketches. Simplification of character design will always come naturally. And even if you have the most simplistic character, you will always, always subconsciously find a way to simplify the way that you draw that character, if you draw them enough. So practice, but with intent to simplify and you will speed up that process by a lot. As long as you're understanding where you're improving and where you're stuck, you will always be able to move forward as long as you have the intent and the discipline to keep going. Which leads me to Boom! Bijan's Gray Box Academy Discord server is now ready for new members. It's brand spanking new. Here, you can request general feedback from other artists involved in the community, participate in weekly and bi weekly art challenges, as well as joining the Gray Box University. Note that not everything is set up for this, so if you subscribe to it now, you will likely be doing that for general channel support until it's finished. But for $10 a month, you can experience the earliest renditions of being a Gray Box University student. You have 30 day access to all all exclusive university assignments, channels, and challenges, as well as direct in-server contact with me where you can pick my brain and ask for professional grade critiques and suggestions included with your enrollment. We'll be hosting the Graybox Awards with the winners announced right here on the channel. For winning, you get a written employment recommendation, and for completing the entire year, aka two semesters, you get a certification of completion. Now, back to the video. Join the Discord for more information. Character design is really tough to tackle. And I truly hope that this video has assisted you in more ways than one, because these are all tips that I wish I could have been told when I was first getting into it. To this day, I've only had two character design jobs outside of indie games, and it was a doozy to tackle, but it was one of the most fun times of my life and one of the most rewarding. So I wanted to share that experience and share my knowledge with you for free on this channel because that's what the gray box is all about. Thank you for being so supportive. We are already at 1,300 at the time of recording this and I haven't even checked for today. I don't know how much it's climbed, but you guys have been amazing. And I've even gotten some heartfelt messages coming my way as to how good this series has been for a lot of you out there. So my heart goes out to you. Thank you so much. Don't forget there are plenty of ways 
to support me and this channel. If you want to see it go far, go further, go beyond. We also have a GoFundMe down in the description below targeted toward relocation costs and reparations. All the details are down below. Please do go check it out. And ending this video, we have a nice little portrait of my parents. December 2nd, the day that this video was originally supposed to go up, was actually their anniversary. So I did this little sketch to celebrate. They also have a YouTube channel. You can find that down in the description as well. But for now, that is all from me. Thank you so much for attending this week's class. And remember, later this week, we have another class coming. Since this one got delayed, you're getting two classes this week, okay? No ifs, ands, or buts, unless we get more power outages. Uh, then that would, uh, that would, that would suck. But um, yeah, take care. Have a good night, evening, morning, wherever you are. And I will see you on the next video this Saturday. Bye-bye.